Hello everyone, Jake here today. I'm going to be showing you how to install Exchange Server 2013 on Server 2012. So here I've got my Exchange ISO extracted there and also up above it I've got the three things that you need to install after or before you install Exchange. So here's all the extracted files and there's the filter packs and the runtimes. So now, I'll just show you how much RAM I've got. I've got 4 gig of RAM in here. This is just a virtual machine using VMware Player that I'm running it on. Yeah, so that's basically it. So now you want to start PowerShell and run as administrator. So once you're in PowerShell, you're going to need to change the folder to the directory that your Exchange ISO is. So mine's just on my desktop under a folder called Exchange. And I'll just list all the files in here just to make sure. Yep, I'm in the right folder, that it all looks the same. So now that we've done that, and we're in the folder, we need to do dot backslash. And after setup, we need to write forward slash prepare schema. And then another forward slash I accept exchange server license terms and then you just hit enter and it will do its little thing so it starts the unattended setup sped this up a whole heap so usually you know this takes about five minutes but this is running like five thousand percent so now you just need to press up and that'll bring the last command back and we're going to have to change this little part because we're not preparing the schema now to prepare active, I mean, prepare AD slash org name, organization name, I mean. And then you need to put your name in, like, so mine's here's Jake and yours might be Contozo, I don't know, whatever your business name is or whatever you want your exchange, you know, business name to be called. So I'm just going organization name, here's Jaken. This is just testing, whatever. And then once that's in, just hit enter. And that'll make a container inside of your um, Active Directory called here's Jaken to put the exchange stuff in. Once again, I've sped that right up, but I'm gonna need to open Notepad now. And I've got a little script, which I'll have below this video that needs to be put into PowerShell once this is completed, which is the next command, which will install all these features and prerequisites that you need for Exchange Server. So there's the script, I've just pasted it into there. As you see in Notepad, that's a pretty long script, so I'm not gonna type it out, it's a lot easier to copy and paste. So just, you need to copy it out of this window in a second. And then just right click inside of um, your PowerShell session and that'll paste. You don't use Control V or anything like that, you just right click and then hit enter and it'll start installing all of these features. I've sped this right up as you'll see because it does actually take a while to do. That didn't just happen in three seconds, it happened in about four minutes. So now you need to restart the server. If you get this little warning message there, the yellow warning message, make sure you restart the server. Not every time you'll get it, but it seems most times you do. So exit everything and restart, basically. Once again, this is sped right up. This actually took about 10 minutes to happen. As you can see, it's running at super speed. So yeah, you don't want to sit here for 10 minutes watching me do all that stuff, do you? So now just log in. Make sure you're logging in as your domain administrator as well. Because if you're not as the domain administrator, you will not be able to do this. And you'll run into all sorts of errors and be scratching your head why it's happening and all that sort of stuff. So now, wait for it to log in. So now we're logged in and everything, and we've done all the prerequisites, we've rebooted our computer, we need to install these things, which they're in the description below. If you look down, there'll be links to them. And you need to install them in order because one's, especially one's a service pack, you need to install it first. 
So this one here, this is the UCMA runtime setup. Just click it, run through it. It's pretty basic. Just hit next, next, then install the filter pack and install the service pack to the filter pack. So now this is pretty basic, just accept the license terms and hit install. Then you just got to leave it do its thing, it'll run through its installation, punch it out, then hit finish. Basic, isn't it? And then this little black window should just disappear. Yep. So now, you don't want that one because that's the service pack. You want to use the filter pack. So run that and that'll do its little magic. You want to hit next here, accept the license agreements, hit next, and then it'll just do its thing. Now that's finished, you need to install the service pack. So just the same thing, make sure you agree to the terms, hit continue, it'll do its little magic, and then you're done. Installation complete. How difficult was that? So now that's done, what I like to do, just because it's good practice, is run Windows Update. I don't like this update actually. I like the, I prefer the old style one where you can see how many updates and everything quite simply. So you just hit here, go install optional updates and it'll just check for updates and then you make sure you install them and you're laughing. So now that's found these updates, you just need to go in and make sure they're all ticked. Hit install, same thing as usual updating and it'll just do its magic update. And once again, I've sped this right up for you, as you can see, because nobody likes sitting and watching updates happen. So once you've installed the updates, if it asks you to restart, make sure that you restart. If you don't restart, your installation will not work. You will not be able to re um, install if you do not restart after the updates or if there's a pending restart. So make sure that you restart before you install. So now that the server's rebooted, open where your installation files are. It might be on the CD, it might be on a USB stick, it might be like me, just extract it on your desktop. Wherever it is, open it up and run the setup application. And then you want to make sure you connect to the internet and check for updates. This doesn't have, this won't find any because well, it's recently new and there hasn't been any major updates to the installation. So it'll just tell me no updates. Then it just copies all the installation files across as it does. And then you will need to hit next here, basically. Just, you can read that if you want, or you can just hit next. So now just accept the license terms, hit next, use the recommended settings. If you don't want to use the recommended settings and manually set all your stuff, you can do it, but I'm just using recommended. Now because this is a single server installation, you're going to need to tick the mailbox role and the client access role. And then here, in a real server environment, I would put this on a different partition. As you see, this is just a lab, I've just got the one drive, so I'm leaving it as its default, but you can change that to D slash exchange data if you want. Malware scanning. If you want to scan for malware using a third party software, make sure you hit yes for this. But if not, hit no. So now it just does its little magic. Let the setup run. It does take a fair while. This took probably 50 minutes to install and I've sped it right up as you can see just because, you know, you don't want to be sitting here watching it for 50 minutes, do you? But yeah, so once it's done, it'll just pop up with a little box saying that its setup has completed, and then the next button will appear, and you need to hit that. So you just hit the next button, and that'll take you to this little window that says setup completed. Make sure you reboot the server. As you see, complete the installation of Exchange Server 2013, reboot the server. There's not much point ticking that box for launch the Exchange Administration Center because it won't work properly until you reboot the server anyway. So what you need to do is just hit finish and then go and reboot the server.
So now the server's rebooted, open up your little Explorer window, Internet Explorer window, and navigate to HTTP, um, you know, that HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash ECP. And that should take you to the um, Exchange Control Panel. Ah, oh, yep, sorry, it should be HTTPS, not HTTP, because it's, it's on port 443. So then you just need to go continue to this website, which is not recommended. And it might pop up a couple of things asking you to do some stuff, and just hit add, like, you know, that security thing. But it does take a little while. I'm not sure if that's because it's the first time that this has been booted up, or because it's a virtual machine running with not full specs, not on a full server, basically. Well, here's your Outlook web app for your management, login as administrator, and you are in and done. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos. See you later. It's been Jake. Bye.